Ooga booga, ooga booga. Hello, boogies. Coming to you live from in front of a museum this evening. <laughs> Am I the a-hole? If you are unfamiliar with how this works, this is your first one, really? Because I've done a lot of them. It's a fun little series where uh, people go to the subreddit, Am I the a-hole? And they ask the age-old question, who is the a-hole in the situation? Is it me or is it someone else? And of course, what we do is we come in with our infinite wisdom and we school these people on life. For example, the first one, would I be the a-hole if I told my husband I won't allow his girl best friend to stay with us while she's in town. So she is 22, her husband is also 22, and he has a girl best friend. Let's call her Jane. Her husband met Jane when they were just kids, but Jane moved away last year of high school. She hasn't been back since, and she and husband have stayed in contact. I have never met her. She refuses to have any contact with me. She says that it makes her uncomfortable that I want to talk to her. A really close friend of him doesn't want to talk to his wife? Like the most important person in his world? They have had feelings for each other, but never at the same time. So there wasn't a relationship at any point. I'm not concerned about cheating. I have full access to my husband's phone and know all of his accounts on all social media. Yeah, I'm not concerned about his cheating because I have a watching eye. Nothing he does goes unclocked. As I read the beginning of that sentence, I said, I'm not concerned about cheating. I was like, oh, that's nice. They have a trusting relationship. And it's like, no, it's just because I can access the proof anytime I need it. Our relationship is like me inside of a prisoner guard tower and my husband roaming the prison halls. I am starting to get the impression that she has feelings for him again. We ran into it a few months ago and he talked to her about it and she backed off. Well, she's planning on coming to town for several days in May and is wanting to stay in our house. I'm extremely uncomfortable with this, especially because the husband won't be able to get the weekdays off work, so I would be home with her. I'm a stay-at-home mom by myself. I'm concerned my husband will be upset if I tell him I don't want her to come. I was considering offering to help pay for a hotel over the weekend so my husband and I could both be available to see her. Am I being unreasonable or do I have a right to be cautious about this? Edit, many people are asking why I would be unhappy about this if I want to meet her so badly. Why? Come on. <laughs> Come on. People are like, you wanted, you wanted to meet her so bad so she should be able to stay with you, okay? In your house. She's planning on staying for more than a week. That is very overwhelming time frame for a first interaction. Absolutely it is. Here's the odd thing is that she and her husband are both 22 and married. And they're not talking about like, oh, it's like a new marriage. It seems like they've been married for, you know, a, a time. So maybe they got married when they were 20 or 21. And oh God, and when her last year of high school is when she moved away. She moved away last year of high school. So she moved away when she was probably 17. And then you probably started dating when you were either 17 or 18. To date, get engaged, and then get married, and then be into your marriage already? What do you guys think? I'm gonna throw, I just, let's, let me throw it to you right away. I feel like this woman should comfortably be able to tell her husband, I don't think she should stay here. I don't know her. And you're just, if it was family, it's a different story. This is just a friend, and at some point, They've had feelings for each other. This is not the best way to do like a first meet and greet. Like, no, 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 you should uh, <laughs> ease into this relationship. Not just, hey, I'm gonna stay with you for a week. Also, the husband's gonna be gone. So unless the, the wife and this girl hit it off, which seems unlikely, then it's just gonna be awkward under the roof for the, for the week. Oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> I don't even think you have to pay for the hotel. No, thank you. Wait, did you say stay at home mom? Oh, she's a stay at home mom. So there's a child as well. This suddenly seems a little bit less real to me. They are married at 22, which not isn't, it's not like the craziest thing ever, but she's a stay at home mom who's never met a very good friend of her husband. Also, you didn't mention anything about a baby. And I feel like uh, a new mom would be like, hey, there's a baby to contend with. <laughs> you know what I mean? 60, 40, 60, 40, this is fake. That's my feeling. Would I be the a-hole for asking a family to remove their child's death memorial from my property? Should be fun. I recently purchased a home on a country road. Five years ago, some drunk local teenagers wrapped their car around a tree on the property and one died. Their family created a roadside memorial with a four foot cross and a wooden sign. People come a few times a year and place flowers, notes, etc. The memorial is on my property in front of a tree they hit about 10 feet from the road. Do you leave the tree up? Or do you chop the tree down? When uh, like when a bear eats somebody, they go out and they hunt the bear and they kill the bear. When a tree kills somebody, do they not chop the tree down? I understand that the logic isn't like one to one. <laughs> I think they, they go kill the bear because now the bear has tasted human and they don't want the bear to, you know, be like, ooh, yummy, I'm gonna go get me some more of that. And a tree can't be like, ooh, dead children. Let me, uh, let me put my roots out into the road to steer them to me. Coming to bed, honey? 
Yes, dear. I don't want to see this memorial every day. It's depressing and reminds me that a tragedy happened here. Why did you buy this property? Is my question. Which I don't need. You don't need? You know what those teenagers didn't need? To die. Oh, but I'm sorry that your needs come first. I'm not sure who I'm mad at here yet. The tree, this woman, or the teenagers? I'm trying to get over some stuff. What? I want this home to be a fresh, clean start. Why did you buy a haunted property then? We're not positive it's haunted, but there's a possibility. But I'm also sensitive to the kid's family and friend's feelings. Would I be the a-hole if I asked the family to take down the memorial? <laughs> Why would you buy this property? I don't, that's, that's the thing that gets me. It's like, did you not do your due diligence when purchasing a property? It's a huge, it's a huge commitment. Finding out who died there in the past feels like something you should be doing. It does feel disrespectful to, yeah, take down a memorial. Listen, this, this place that I'm in now, so great. No gun violence yet. When the last gun violence took place at my last place, there was a big shootout on the fourth floor. Like it was like right around that time where I had to renew my uh, my lease. Usually rent goes up every month by a certain percentage, but it had gone down like by a decent amount because of all the gun violence. And everyone was leaving and they're like, we need to try to keep tenants as, as happy as possible. And I accepted, I stayed. If I had stayed and experienced more gun violence, more shootouts, perhaps on the third or second floor, I have no right to complain because I knew what I was signing up for. Thinking back, what was I thinking? <laughs> it doesn't matter, I'm still living, right? You purchased this property fully knowing that there was a, a horrible accident here, all right? You're lucky it's just a memorial. You're lucky there's not like creaks in your attic and you're like, oh wait, what's this noise? Am I the a-hole for telling my husband that if he pays me hourly rates, I will do more housework? <laughs> I am a steam fitter, but I've been at it for a while and I'm in supervision. With bonuses and incentives, but not counting benefits, I earn over $100 an hour. That's like $600,000 a year. Which is just a number I've, I just put it out there. That's not true at all. <laughs> it is great. Our retirement savings are piling up and we have been able to splurge on the kids and ourselves. Wow, what could go wrong? <laughs> My husband is upset, however, because I decided to pay for a cleaning lady. He and I discussed it and we agreed that him and the kids didn't do a great job keeping the house clean and tidy while I was away. I hated coming home to a mess. It caused a few fights because it was like they expected me to come home and clean up after them. Husband came to me last time I was home my husband came to me last time I was home. When was the last time you were home? Why wouldn't you say like yesterday? And said that we should cut back on the service when I'm home, that I should be doing more housework. He thinks that we are wasting money. I said that I work 14 days in a row and that those are 13 hour days. Yes, it is mostly paperwork, but his job as a teacher isn't much more physically challenging. I said that I could offer him two options. Ooh, an ultimatum. <laughs> if he wanted, he could, we could completely get rid of the service and him and the kids could make sure the house was in good shape when I got home. Or he could pay me my hourly rates to do extra housework when I am on my days off. He is upset with me and says that I am being financially manipulative. I think that he, if he and the kids actually did what they are supposed to do when I'm away, bone of this would be an issue. Here's my thing. It doesn't really matter who is the breadwinner. I think in a good relationship, you want to try to carry as much weight as the other person going out into the world and earning and then having like a good place to come home to like that's 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 a lot of work and you need to share the workload if she is earning that much money and he is a teacher which hey that's nice that's a good profession but you are not earning money <laughs> if she's gonna be the breadwinner then i think you should uh pick up the slack if you are not doing a good enough with the chores and she already has a solution this is what makes no sense to me there's got to be something wrong here with this guy so all you have to do is you have to do less housework that's the only thing you have to do and you have a problem with this i don't know he he clearly has some issue he has an issue this is not your issue. This is a him issue. I can't think of a single situation where this guy is in the right. He has to do less work and he's upset about it. <laughs> His pride is hurt that she makes more than him and so he isn't the provider. Sheet. He said we should cut back on the services when I'm home that I should be doing more housework. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way you earn well into the six figures and your partner's like, hey, on your days off, I need you working. There's, I just, I, I just can't, I don't buy it. Boogies, as I would like to do occasionally, I'm gonna bring on guests just so that I can prove to you how much better my opinions are than the other peoples of the world. Today's guest who I'm going to utterly destroy in the marketplace of ideas is Scott Kramer. Ever since I moved my, my uh, the power for my monitor just keeps like going in and out. I, at this point, I never know if you're like doing a bit, grabbing props, <laughs> like you were trying to fool me. So my job is to try to put it into Joe's head 
to say the word head when he calls the coin toss. I'm like, he said monitor <laughs> twice now. What is he trying to put into my head? Like, what does monitor mean? I love just destroying the trust I have between you and I immediately. Am I the a-hole for ignoring my husband during our flights when he expressed anxiety over flying? So this woman is 33. She recently married her husband who's 30 and we took a three hour flight to Mexico for our honeymoon. I fly a lot for my job, so I have racked up a lot of miles. My husband isn't a big fan of flying though he has gotten uh, gotten better and tends to just hold my hand and close his eyes during takeoff and landing. When I booked our flights, I requested to use my points if an upgrade to business class became available, but I made it clear that I only wanted this upgrade if two seats became available. I was so excited for this trip, I checked us in online, all is going well, and then we go to board and the person scanning our boarding passes stops us. She says, it seems that my husband was upgraded to business class, but only him and ask if that is okay. I immediately say no. We are on our honeymoon and would like to stay together. But then my husband jumps in and says, no, it's fine. I'll go to business class. I look at him in complete shock and he tells me that I fly all the time and I've been in business class before, but he hasn't. So he deserves a chance to experience it. You ever flow business class? I've never even been in a situation where I've seen someone get upgraded. I didn't, I thought that was like a myth. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't know that was a real thing. That's how they like, try to sell you it, the, the airport experience. They're like, no, you can, there's a there's a chance. It's like a lottery. Yeah, exa exactly. It's like a, a lie that I've never seen come to fruition. But maybe, I, clearly it's not a lie. To say I am pissed off is an understatement. She is furious. He, uh -huh. though, is all smiles, taking his seat. And I go to my seat where they sit me next to an old woman. Oh, gross. With a baby. Oh, worse. Within maybe five to ten minutes of sitting there, trying to hold back tears because my husband left me alone on our flights during our honeymoon and use my points for his upgrade, no less. <laughs> he starts to text me saying he feels anxiety over flying. I ignore the texts and stop looking at my phone. Within maybe an hour after we are in the air, he comes to the back of the plane to find me, offers me half of his business class breakfast and asks why I'm ignoring him. <laughs> that he is scared and he needed me to tell him it'd be okay since I am such an experienced flyer. I told him maybe he should have thought about that before leaving me alone, before our honeymoon even really began. He gets angry, tells me that this may be the only time he gets to fly business class and he was giving me half of his breakfast to make up for it so that I could at least be supportive of his genuine fear. I roll my eyes, sarcastically say thanks, and he goes back up to his seat. I tried to just move on and forget about it so that we could just enjoy our honeymoon. But he guilt tripped me about not comforting him via text before takeoff. And now I'm wondering if I am being unreasonable and should have just let him enjoy his time in business class and ensure him that it'd be okay. Am I the asshole? <laughs> How does it feel, Scott, to be a part of the Am I the Aho community now? Like you're you're one of us. It, it makes me a little nervous. It does make me a little nervous. Taking a hard stance on something is terrifying. <laughs> oh yeah, no, and here's here's what we do here as well. There's no middle ground, all right? I want you when you take a side. You take that side completely. Who do you who do you think is the a-hole in the situation and why? I it feels obvious to me, but again, that's this is where my nerves kick in. Yeah, hey, look at that face you're making. Now I'm second guessing myself. <laughs> Dylan, text me and tell me everything's gonna be okay, please. <laughs> okay, well, I think that the husband is the one that's in the wrong here. Not recognizing the social cues of the wife saying, no, no, We if if one of us is going to business class, we both have to go. Hold on, hold on, give me a second. I'm going to take notes. So you say oh, no, social we're cues, okay, <laughs> continue. He thinks that since she has flown business class before for her job, that means that when the opportunity arises for just one of them to fly business class, it, it, it should be him. Well, what I say is, homie, you're on your honeymoon. If you and I were on a flight and I got upgraded to business class and I took it, how would you feel? I would, well, first of all, you'd be dead to me forever because how dare you do that? But I would understand we didn't come together as one, you know, in the sanctity but of marriage. But what if I gave you half of my breakfast? Oh, you son of a bitch. You sold me. You know what? That's totally The power wrong. of a croissant. He, he knows, he already knows that he doesn't like flying. He doesn't feel comfortable flying. He knows that about himself. She knows that about her husband. So in her scenario, she's like, I need to keep us together because he needs me to comfort him during takeoff oh. and during landing. So you're, you're thinking she doesn't want to split up for his sake. I think that could be part of it. You know, she's a loving wife. Well, he says, you know what? No, I can handle it. And also I want that business class breakfast. So I'm going to take it and, I'll, and maybe I'll give you half later. Then the flight comes and he realizes, wait, I can't handle this. I can't do it. Maybe he was feeling confident initially. Well, he's already made his bed, Dylan. Mm -hmm. he, now he's got a lay in it, you see. 
He might actually have a bed in, in first class. <laughs> he honestly probably does. He's got little slippers and everything. And then when he's like, now he's coming back, he's crawling back like a little rodent crawling back out of the dumpster. And she says, you know what? I'm not going to take the high road in this scenario. Why can't he just hold the hand of the Malaysian prince that's probably sitting next to him in business class? He can hold his hand. <laughs> Scott, let me ask you a question. Let's hear it. Is it wrong to be blessed? <laughs> Dylan, what the hell are you talking about, man? The man gets a blessing from God. You will never get this experience again. You don't fly. How about first class? I've never been. You've never been. We don't know the treasures that are up in first class, but this man is about to find out. And you're going to tell me that he's not allowed to go to first class? Maybe he could have said, hey, is there another available seat in business class? And maybe we could even pay the upcharge for it. Maybe we could fly business class on the way home, Dylan. You see what I'm saying here? And if there wasn't, if there wasn't an extra business class seat. You swallow your humble pill and you go back with the rest of us in the back of the plane. And you sit with your wife and you have a, you know, maybe you eat a little wafer cookie that they bring you. You drink a Diet Coke and you enjoy your honeymoon <laughs> together and you don't start off uh, on the wrong foot. Let us suffer together, you're saying. Let that's that's what together. marriage should be? In, in sickness and in mm -hmm. health, Dylan. I want the health. I want the croissants. Let me, uh, let me, let me get into my actual argument here. The wife said no. That, that is what, he, is. he should be able to pick up on social cues. That is what you said. Mm -hmm. Here's what I find fascinating about that, Scott. Have you ever made a snap decision? They're holding up a line. She also doesn't want to hold up a line. She's feeling like she needs to go along with things. And the, the person scanning the ticket's like, hey, you're business class. Maybe he felt the pressure like, oh no, no, like, let's just, let's just move along. You know, it's possible that maybe he's also feeling that anxiety. He's a man prone to anxiety as this whole story is about. Mm -hmm. So maybe he just wants to, no, 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 let's just, you know, do as they say, do as they're telling us. I'll go to business class. Ooh, sucks, but we, we gotta do what they tell us. Dylan, can I ask you a question? Feel free. Do you think that this man, um, once he was in his chair, you know, and he was by himself without his wife on the honeymoon, do you think he maybe had a moment of realization where he was like, oh, I made a snap decision. That was that was maybe a bad idea. I think that's entirely possible. And I think that's why he came with the, the olive branch, the, the peace offering of half of his breakfast. I also, I think I have maybe the, the most compelling point. I talk about this often in the, the Am I the Hope? and by the a-hole videos is um, directing a story to make sure that um, people feel what you want them to feel mm. rather than what the truth is. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of verbiage in here where she's holding back tears. She has the worst seat uh, sitting next to a grandma and a baby. What's wrong with a grandma? I babies, yeah, I get it, but <laughs> what's wrong with grandmas, you know? It, she just, it feels like she's trying to make it seem worse than it is. And then also I found the, the last paragraph interesting. When we landed, I tried to just move on and forget about it so that we could just enjoy our honeymoon. This all started because she made him feel guilty for accepting what was offered to him. But now she's just trying to move on, but he guilt tripped her about not comforting him via text. Now I feel like it's a bit unfair to say, I'm already over it, why aren't you over it? She's trying to make it seem like, ugh, I was ready to move on, but this little big old baby won't just like let, like enjoy his honeymoon with me. You know what, let me actually give you a point here because she's telling us to say I'm pissed off is an understatement after he agrees to do the thing. And if she's really like seething, just so mad, either he's really not picking up on that and he's kind of a doofus, or she's not actually giving that off. And then the more she thought about it, the more angry she got. So mm -hmm. maybe she went back later and we reworked it. She fictionalized it in her mind and she posted it to Reddit. So then some chump would f sit here and defend her. You know what? She did him so wrong, actually. I've switched sides to him. <laughs> I get you so easily over here. <laughs> Since you're coming my way, let me let me also give you a little bit of uh, leeway. I don't know if this is toxic masculinity or not, but to need like re a text reassurance that everything is gonna be okay feels a little uh, pathetic. She is just a person on a plane. It's not like the more experience you have flying, the more control you have over a plane's takeoff and landing. If he does have ridiculous anxiety over flying, that's one thing and it's almost, you know, you can't really control that sometimes, right? But I think in this scenario, he's being a whiny little baby. Although is, is something going on with Boeing right now that I haven't been paying close attention to? What's actually going yeah. on there? <laughs> that's true, that's true. They are, uh, are, they are we can't talk work? about it because they're literally killing people. So like, we <laughs> <laughs> let's, not, let's not get into that. Maybe he's right, actually. <laughs> How about, what if, what if this man got upgraded to first class and while they're arguing, they end up staying at the airport for a little bit longer and the hotel that they're supposed to stay in explodes. There you go. And if that was the reality, <laughs> maybe I would be on the guy's side. It's like, uh, what's that movie where it's uh, the guy is on the plane and he's like, no, we got to get off before it because it's going to Final gonna Destination? 
Yes, yeah. that, this is, might be a final destination situation. So the husband is doing the right thing. I think we both agree. <laughs> All right, awesome. Thank you to Scott for stopping by. You guys can let me know in the comment section how uh, how much I beat him by. And if you want to check out Scott's channel, he's another YouTuber, if, you, if you're unfamiliar. He does uh, farming content. His most recent video, how much milk can you get from a cow in 24 hours challenge, I just, I was on the edge of my seat. The technique he had going was just something to behold, you know? All right, back to it. Am I the a-hole for asking my husband not to talk about family planning with his mom? My husband and I have a five-year-old and we have been on the fence about adding baby number two for a few years now. We have a big vacation plan this summer and I told him after that, let's try and see what happens. We were out to dinner with his mom when my husband said, after we go on our trip, we're going to try for number two and see what happens. She then replied, well, you're a little too late for that now, aren't you? Since our only child is five and she thinks the age gap would be too big, five isn't that big. Fifteen. Even 15 isn't that big. Have as many babies as you want, whenever you want. I was really upset as I wanted this to be private since we didn't even know if we can conceive again. And I just don't want the outside pressure right now. He got upset with me and said, it's just my mom and said how I shouldn't care because he only told her. I'm still really bothered by this, especially since she is very judgmental to begin with. And he thinks I'm overreacting and will not acknowledge that I didn't want anyone to know about our future family plans. He thinks it's not a big deal because it's just his mom and we're the a-hole. Yeah. I think you are. <laughs> not, not an a-hole, but I think you're blowing this out of proportion. To say that I don't think you should tell your parents about your family plans, your parents are family. I can understand not telling like friends or like, I don't know, people that are more distant, acquaintances, coworkers. There are certain things in a relationship that uh, family doesn't need to get involved in, but this is not one of them. Because oftentimes like grandparents are involved in, you know, children, child rearing. It feels odd to try to cut her out. And I I, I understand uh, she then replied, well, you're a little too late for that now, aren't you? One of two things is happening. Either this woman is judgmental or she's trying to pose this woman as a judgmental person to justify not wanting to tell her so that we're on her side. Maybe trying for a baby, I think that's an okay and acceptable thing. Like, I don't think you're crossing a line spilling the beans there. Not the a-hole, it's just his mom who immediately told you unsolicited it was a bad idea, making it uncomfortable and proving exactly why you should keep things private. Who cares what the mom's reaction was? To like to a degree, like it's not, it doesn't really change anything, you know? Just his mom is the worst person to include? Your spouse's mother is the worst person to tell baby news about? The worst person! I can think of like several more people who would be worse to include in this conversation. Chris Hemsworth? He doesn't need to be involved. Any members of the Taliban? They would be worse to tell. Al-Qaeda? Just in most terrorist groups, okay? I mean, <laughs> I'm just spitballing ideas of people, like in groups of people. If she was like an awful person, I can understand it. You came to like a mutual agreement with your husband where it's like, yeah, we're not, let's not involve her much. But it seems like his mom and him have a good relationship. Uh, some things are not to be shared on a de facto basis. Family planning and when you are going to start having smoosh to achieve results are not for public discourse unless you both agree first. It's not public discourse. You're having a private family conversation with your fucking family. Oh my God. Ah, I can't with Reddit people sometimes. You're looking at this in reverse. Wife and husband have privacy in all matters for anything more than trivial. It kind of feels trivial. Like, hey, yeah, we're gonna maybe try for having a baby. Like I understand, like the, the having a child is not trivial, but just like the information of like, yeah, we might try to conceive a second child. Oh wait, husband and wife might have baby? No way. I'm pissed, I'm pissed, I'm pissed. I'm so, I'm upset. Am I the a-hole for refusing to pay for my girlfriend's plane ticket after she decided to stay longer on her trip without me? I hope there's somebody in this story for me to really dig into, because I'm upset right now. So here's the deal. So she, the, this guy's 28, his girlfriend's 27. They've been dating for two years. They had planned, or he had planned, a two week vacation to Italy. I paid for the flights, hotels, everything, because I make more than she does, and I wanted it to be a stress-free trip for both of us. Everything was great until the last day when she tells me she wants to stay longer to find herself and think about a relationship without me. She didn't discuss this with me beforehand and it completely blindsided me. I said I wouldn't be paying for her new return tickets whenever she decides to come back. Now she's upset calling me unsupportive and selfish and some of our friends are saying I'm being an a-hole because I left her stranded in a foreign country without financial help. Why? Why are people like this? So Reddit, am I the a-hole for refusing to pay for her new plane ticket home after she chose to extend her trip without any heads up? Updates, thank uh, thank you to all the people who responded. I guess I never realized how good my girlfriend was at making me feel like unreasonable stuff was normal and rational and that I was the crazy one. Anytime uh, something is raw and fresh and you're like, oh, they're all, they're, they're so good at being manipulative. 
I don't know, red flags. It's like, let us call out the manipulation. We're both back in America now, and she's packing her stuff to go stay with her friends for a bit until she can find a new place. Soon after I posted, it was time to go to the airport, so I did, without her. I'm one of the people who arrives really early because I think I'll never get to the gate on time because everything that could go wrong... I don't need to know this information. Why are you telling me? Here's my theory about airport travel. I don't care. <laughs> I got to the airport early. That's all. I don't, you think I'm going to question you? The fact that you thought I was going to question you makes me feel like this is not real. Liars will always go into detail about things that don't matter because then they feel like it makes for a more credible story. I was there for about an hour by myself mulling things over and talking to my mom. I looked at a couple responses to this post, but I didn't trust that I wouldn't lose it if I started responding and I definitely didn't want to burst into tears while I was at the airport. I'm getting weirded out. As I was talking to my mom, my girlfriend showed up. I guess she thought I was bluffing but it had a rude awakening when the hotel staff kicked her out of the room because I'd only paid through that day. I took no small amount of satisfaction in this, not gonna lie. She'd been so concerned about the plane tickets that she didn't even stop to think about where she was going to stay. She is 27? And she didn't once think, okay, well, if today's the last day in this hotel, where am I gonna stay tonight? She didn't, that she wasn't able to think of that? This ain't real. As many of you have guessed, she met someone while we were in Italy. She was quick to tell me that it was just a physical attraction and that they hadn't done anything. But she had his at and was wondering, or was wanting to see if it would go anywhere. I guess that's what I get for not feeling well and wanting to stay in one night while she went out to explore. Random new detail that probably should have been given before. This ain't real. <laughs> Obviously, I told her things were over between us. Even though she tried to make it sound like nothing had happened, the fact was A, I couldn't feel like I could trust her when she said that, and B, I don't really want to be with someone who feels like it's okay to keep her options open while she's been in a monogamous relationship for the past two years. The flight home was awkward as F, and she decided, or she tried really hard to give me another pitch for why I should stay together. I think as we got closer to home, reality started setting in, and she realized she'd just thrown a lot away. Yeah, I have a lot to offer. She really, it really hit her hard that she wouldn't be able to be with me anymore. Yeah, because I'm catch. Finally, I didn't see all the comments, uh, but to the few that were downvoted into Oblivion, who said this was fake, because I hadn't updated in several hours, F you. That's aggressive. I was looking for a reasonable dissenting opinions that might have helped me make sense of the situation, and you're accusing me of making this up for random internet points? Believe it or not, my priority was not to tell a bunch of strangers on the internet how my world was walling apart around me. I know it's easy to think that people aren't real and their struggles are meaningless because screens divide us. But <laughs> ironically, you're the Astros. <laughs> what a freaking loser. Hey, the person that posted this, this is fake. You're a loser. If it's not fake, let me tell you, this is inc- I am so glad your girlfriend's keeping her options open because this is incredibly manipulative. I, I take it back. It might not be fake. It just might be this person's a narcissist. Most people are able to look and go, okay, well, this is an anonymous uh, like posting board. People don't know any details about me. They don't know any of my personality, any details of my life. They don't know me in the slightest outside of this basic information that I'm giving them about one story. So if some people don't believe me, I can understand that because in this subreddit, some posts are fake. How manipulative people think is you are questioning me? How dare you? This shows your character. How low are you to think that I would stoop to that level? How terrible of you. Somehow he's trying to convince us that we're the bad people because we can't v verify any of the story. You think you're accusing me of making this up for random internet points? So you're trying to like minimize, like why would I even ever make this up? But it's known people lie all the time. People like to lie. People like to lie. That's all you need to know. Anytime someone uses the defense, why would I lie? Oftentimes, they're lying. <laughs> also, the, the fact that uh, the, the, the few people that were calling him out were downvoted into oblivion. Like, haha, look at these losers, not like the rest of us. He's trying to like group everyone who was like believing him into being like, uh, yeah, we're the ones in the right here. We're the majority here. There was just a few that were downvoted by the masses of the real truth seekers. God, I hate this. I hate this so much. This person sucks. <laughs> Am I the a-hole for rejecting the worst name ever for our offspring? So my husband, who's 38, and I, 36, are expecting our first child, a bouncing baby girl, due in a few months. We were both over the moon when we found out the gender, but now things have gotten complicated, to say the least. See, when we first started talking about names, the boy name was immediately decided. Stuart Jr., after my husband. <laughs> no problem here, it's a classic name and carries family meaning, but for a girl, things got murky. My husband suggested Stuarta. No, you are not having a stroke. Apparently, his logic is that since Stuart ends in, in T, we can just add an A to make it feminine, which is how language works. My parents were almost named me Dylanna. <laughs> I suggested alternatives, feminine names that maybe share a similar sound or meaning to Stuart, names he's mentioned liking in the past, even just going back to the drawing board entirely. But he's fixated 
And Stuarta. <laughs> there's gonna be someone in the audience named Stuarta who is like, why are you laughing, Dylan? What's so wrong with Stuarta? So this woman understands, uh, like, wanting to honor the family, but she just, that the kid's gonna be bullied, she feels like, and is gonna have issues with self-esteem. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Like, if your kid's gonna be bullied, the name isn't going to be the thing that determines if kids are gonna bully your kid, you know? It's not like a bunch of cool kids are gonna come around your kid being like, hey, you seem really cool. What's your name? Stuart, huh? <laughs> Let's beat this bitch up. So Reddit, am I the jerk for refusing to budge on Stuart? <laughs> Please, no suggesting other TA names. This man clearly has a theme, and I need to gently steer him away from it, not fuel the fire. This is a question I've been asking people recently, is uh, like, before you got married, did you have conversations about not only like morals, how you're gonna raise your kids, how many kids you want, all these things? And it shocks me how few conversations are had. And this is a, one thing to talk about as well. It's like, hey, are, it, are, can we have like a veto system? Are you dead set on certain names for children? Like we have to really iron these details out. It feels lame as hell to just be like, no, we're naming this kid this, that's the end of it. There's no um, collaboration there. It's just, I demand this. And that, that's never good. If your partner really hates a name that you want to give a child, then find, find a compromise, right? That's what relationships are about. I do think that um, she is using the the self the self esteem and bullying thing as an excuse to try to like substantiate her argument. But I think it's fine to just be like, no, I don't like it. It's dumb. Sorry, any Stuartes in the audience. <laughs> it would be a problem if you like vetoed like name after name after name after name. But you're just like, there's just one name that you're like, no, I don't like this, let's find something else. And you're seeking a compromise and he's not. And that's a problem. All right, Boogies, here's the thing. I'm right about 99.9% .9 of things, but on the off chance that I might've been wrong, <laughs> Feel free to leave your opinions in the comment section. Specifically, if you disagree with me on anything, uh, even if it's like on small pieces of information, let me know what you think I missed. And uh, I really appreciate that about you guys, just because I think you guys are like engaged in these stories as well. And you guys are also picking up small things that I might not pick up. So if there is anything, um, or if there's a small thing that I pointed out that you agree with, let me know. I'll <laughs> see you guys next time. Bye-bye.